G'day guys. I've got a really, really curly one here. And it's a um, GPX 4000. And what I did, I... Uh, well, David's gone and redone a mylar on it because what it would do would turn on and turn off. It would reset the display and drop the audio and uh, then come back on. And it would do it at odd times and it could be doing it every five seconds or every 30 seconds. It was all over the place. So I've got it running here at the moment. And it was on the uh, display board. Uh, I could see someone had already gone over the uh, display board by the dabs of solder on all the components. So I had a good look at that and said, okay, uh, it's not the components. So then I hooked up my oscilloscope and measured the uh, 16 megahertz oscillator. And uh, what that was running perfectly. And uh, then I would see a hiccup on the, uh, on the oscillation. It went high, low, drop out. So that's interesting. So the crystal oscillator would not do that. It would just uh, stop working. So I looked at all the capacitors around, all the interconnection capacitors around. I'll just turn that down a bit more. It's a bit droney. And uh, all the capacitors around the crystal, um, in case something there was funny, you know, you know, capacitors, ceramic capacitors, uh, really fussy things. But then I found out that if I heated or cooled the board, I could make the fault appear more or less. And uh, so anyway, what I've done, I've basically reflowed the whole board, uh, soldered it properly, redone the uh, chip, everything there, and uh, turned it on and the same fault was there. And it was really crazy. Because, uh, uh, you know, you'd think that you'd touch something and it would start working and you couldn't work out what it was. Well, the fault actually is very, very um, rare to actually find something like this, but it's actually the uh, Atmel little CPU type chip there. It's a little pick chip. And uh, what what happens, it's, it's quite amazing, is that uh, if it's um, cold, it hiccups. If it's warm, it doesn't. And I could simulate it with freeze spray and a hot air gun. So just uh, heating it up around the board, uh, getting up to about 60 degrees or something, uh, it started working perfectly. And then I hit it with a freeze spray. If I hit it with freeze spray now, it'll just shut down. It'll go and hiccup. But what I've done is the only way to fix this. I have um, other programmed Atmel chips, but they're for 4500s, 5000s. And if I put it on this, it will not work. So I can't uh, do it. And they're code locked. You can't go and hack the code and rewrite um, the parameters. So we're a bit um, between a rock and a hard place. So you'd really need this uh, IC. Well, you'll never get the IC. You'll have to buy the whole board if you can. It's probably not supplied anymore. So just that not working will junk the detector. You won't be able to use it. So... Just thinking out of the box, I said, well, we'll keep it warm. I used to build up things called crystal ovens for uh, uh, radio communication equipment years ago. I used to use a uh, thermistor, um, transistor, uh, temperature, temperature stable source like a TL3, uh, what are they, 331 or something of that nature. And uh, yeah, basically, we would, uh, you know, set them up at 55 degrees Celsius. And, they, and the ambient temperature would never get there. So if it got down to zero or minus, it would crank like hell and heat the crystal up. And uh, then what would happen if it got up near um, the top end, if it got up to 50, not that that's going to, but if it went up to 40 degrees or 45, it would uh, completely uh, start dropping the current off to the thermistor. So it would uh, um, not um, heat it up any more than a little bit more than ambient. So just keep it there. And because a crystal is uh, going to be kept stable, um, we didn't want our transmitters drifting all over the uh, radio spectrum. 
So we used to ovenize them. We used to make um, links for, uh, you know, radio stations. So we used to make, make all these things up on 800 megahertz, but now all the phone stuff's there. Uh, so that all had to change. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the links, I think they're all mainly up on um, 10 gigahertz or even 24 gigahertz now, just uh, dish to dish. But uh, even those things drift. Uh, so you got to use uh, elaborate systems to keep them on frequency. Uh, this one here, if I um, hit this, I'll turn up the volume, even though it's annoying. Hopefully you can hear that. If I hit that uh, Atmel chip with free spray, there you go, dropped out. And away it goes again. What I've actually done to keep the temperature up, not that we're going to hit it with free spray, right, in the real life, but uh, I've got a 500 ohm NTC thermistor. And yeah, it's basically, I just got it placed near there. I've got to put it down with proper thermal compound. And just by keeping the IC warm, that draws hardly anything. It's only drawing a few milliamps. And uh, it's on the three volt rail of all things. So it's not, um, you know, drawing a lot of current. You can work that out for yourself. Um, the resistance on these goes up as it gets hotter. So it will, um, it's not like a, uh, a crystal oven where it's exact, but it'll just keep a bit of heat into the chip um, and uh, it will uh, continue uh, working. It just shut down then and it's come up again straight away. So a bit of air around there, probably shut it, shut it down. But I've got to use some thermal compound on there. And uh, by doing that, um, we'll just keep the chill off the chip turn the detector on and uh, it should start working straight away this is the only way i can fix this for the guy there's no other way of uh, making this damaged atmel um, pick type chip uh, function unless we heat it and uh, you know we can't um, you know do it any other way we've got to do it on chip so guys um, if you can see what I've done here, I use my uh, my gift knitting needle that I got, which has been turned into a tuning tool. But uh, one leg, I've just got it tacked onto that top um, inductor there, and the other one, I've I've actually grounded the crystal case uh, and fixed up the grounds on that, and I've just stuck it on the. Uh, more or less near the crystal case on the other leg so it goes to ground so it's only three volts uh and uh when it's when it turns on yeah 500 ohms but when it warms up it probably goes to a thousand ohms so you can work there it's only it's only a few milliamps it's going to do nothing considering the batteries in these things are 72 watt hours um a couple of milliamps is not going to do any difference to the battery whatsoever it won't drain it and when you turn the detector off that voltage roll goes away so it's not going to sit there and drain anything. It's only going to keep it warm while the detector's on. But it's the only way we can do it. But I do have to come up with a really good thermal compound because I've only tacked it there with a tiny little bit of hot melt glue, which obviously is going to get hot and not tack anymore. But as you can see now, now it's getting a bit of temperature into it. She's uh, stable. And uh, it's going to probably continue working forever onwards. There's some, some issue... With the Yatmel chip, metal migration or something of that nature has occurred. But this is the only cure. There's no other way of curing it uh, unless you can find a junked 4000 somewhere that has a good board on it. Um, no other board's going to work. You, 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 can, you can take the chip off another board, stick it in there, and it will not work because it's going to say it's a a 5000 and try and run things in fine gold which it hasn't got it's going to do all sorts of weird stuff and the whole menu is different so it would be driving the uh, menu completely wrong to what um you know is in programmed into the main cpu into the in the detector there so that would uh go completely pear-shaped so yeah it's working uh okay at the moment if i can uh I'll do the doer. Yeah, she's fine. 
but uh, you know it's amazing you, you just got to know these things that you can um from a past history of doing things for uh radio comms that you convert that to fix a uh, uh temperature uh unstable cpu and you can make it work it's working fine now it's uh it's only got a little bit of temperature in it but it's all it needs so and because these things are self-regulating you can stick this in you know basically put it in a fridge and uh, eventually that chip will heat up enough and uh, the detector will start working and uh, on a really really hot day that's going to crank down because uh, they're self-limiting they the hotter they get the less current they draw that's why they're called a negative temperature coefficient uh, thermistor so remember there's ptc which is a positive one and the ntc which is a negative one so don't put a positive one on there um, it's not going to work um, but an ntc one at the right value will work i did try a 100 uh, ohm um, um, ntc on three volts but i thought it was a little bit too hot i didn't want to stress anything and uh, draw too much current so i went to 500 and the 500 works fine as you can hear right now it's still running it hasn't shut down so yeah what a way to fix something it took the thing is it took ages to redo all the connections and uh you know suss out exactly what was going on because even with the free spray it would cool a huge area and even though the crystal and all the capacitors around that part of the board are right near the processor here a little cpu um display basically set up as a display driver and command line for uh down to the main cpu on the board uh you know just by uh keeping it snugly warm um she's a goer so there you go it's a resurrection repair um i just had to go down to jcar and uh buy a couple of these the misters um that's that's uh the cheap part but uh you know all the all the labor <laughs> um a lot of labor goes into finding something that probably is a relatively quick and easy fix but if it was quick and easy someone else should have fixed it because they've already fiddled with it and they didn't fix it so uh yeah that's uh, a 4000 resurrection it will uh go on but i've got to go and find some good uh conductive epoxy i have someone some somewhere i'll go and uh locate it and uh do the um connections properly i'll get to neaten them all up and put some sleeving on them and that and uh yeah well we've now uh got a working 4000 anyway turn him off and uh yeah we should have a, a fairly happy customer because uh even the 4000 is still worth some really good money um they're a really good detector by the way and if people actually knew how well uh they worked they'd be making b lines for them when they come up for sale they're really really good it's like it's like a um like a um a rolls royce version of a 3500 sort of thing it's just a very very good detector it really is so anyway with that i've got this on the high res camera so hopefully it's still uh in high res let's sneak back and just see if it hasn't fallen over oh no it's pointing in the right place um i had to uh move this um far enough back it was interfering with the coil so that'll do that's a quick and easy one but you can see where i've done that there is on the uh inductors the top inductor and uh, just on the ground the ground point um and uh, just uh constant current flow at three volts into that thermistor fixes the problem catches